Dante DiVincenzo's two-year, $9 million deal was voted the most underrated signing of free agency. The reason it was so underrated in the first place, with fans even still tweeting out disapproval, is because people don't take the career of DiVincenzo seriously ever since he became the 17th overall pick back in 2018. The now 25-year-old has received flack for missing the Bucks' 2021 playoff run, which saw his team win the title, with some claiming that Milwaukee was better off without him that year. With that said, if Stephen Curry can turn Nemanja Bjelica, Gary Payton II, and Otto Porter Jr. into big-time names, he can do the same for the likes of Dante DiVincenzo. Then there's Mac McClung, whose status in terms of cracking Coach Steve Kerr's 15-man roster is still very much up in the air. There's been questions about McClung's defense given he's only 6'2", so can the kid realistically add anything to the Warriors? And come the Dubs' preseason debut in Tokyo, Japan in just under a month, what's the narrative Stephen Curry still, for whatever reason, has to reverse? Before covering all that and more, just 9.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe, leave a thumbs up on this video for more uploads like it, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference, and click the link down below in the description to go follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter, I greatly appreciate all of you. Dante's tough, resilient mindset and seemingly non-stop communication with the four other players around him at any given time makes an impact which many don't realize. In terms of the ice in his veins, under pressure in the clutch, Dante has a mixed history. He's got a legendary collegiate career in those scenarios, as DiVincenzo's 31 points in Villanova's NCAA championship clinching game is still the only 30-plus point outing in a college title game in the 21st century. In terms of the 2021-22 season in the NBA, Dante played in just 25 games which involved clutch scenarios, scoring just 22 points total in those outings, Dante made 6 of his 13 field goals, 3 of his 9 triples, and 7 of his 12 free throws between his time in Sacramento and Milwaukee last season, fairly subpar numbers. Moments like this, however, against Orlando, tell you Dante's clutch gene is still intact, Bosses him over for the tie, got it, DiVincenzo! But for the most part down the stretch last season, being a lead ball handler and backcourt contributor, all while recovering from an injury, was a tough situation for him. Thankfully, that beaming pressure won't be a factor when the Dubs touch down in Tokyo for the preseason, as Dante is going to have a chance to slowly but surely get comfortable as a weapon next to the expected sixth man of the year contender, Jordan Poole, off the bench, backing up Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. DiVincenzo will have the least amount of responsibility he's ever had to endure by far, which I'm predicting will allow him to have the most efficient season of his career in 22-23. DiVincenzo is a high-volume three-point shooter and passer offensively, and an above-average rebounder for a combo guard. This past season, with 18 to 15 seconds left on the shot clock, Dante took 1.13 point attempts on average each game and made exactly 40% of them. That should make him a perfect fit in the Warriors' space and pace system. On wide open three pointers, which he should get a lot more of in the Bay, Dante made a solid 38.6% of them. In terms of finishing, Dante's 55.6% mark from 0 to 3 feet was higher than an all-star and fellow combo guard as well as 2022 free agent in newest Atlanta Hawk, DeJounte Murray. Given Dante has the experience of playing next to the game's most dominant slasher in Giannis, he's not going to be starstruck next to Stephen Curry. On the topic of Steph, congrats to the man for getting his degree in sociology from Davidson by graduating, therefore becoming the first player ever to have his jersey retired for his alma mater. It's insane that Curry was the 256th ranked player coming out of high school in 2006 and went on to carve out an all-time great legacy. Steph should have three finals MVPs to his name. He's been the best player on all four of the Warriors championship teams, despite J.J. Redick, C.J. McCollum, among other talking heads who say it's Kevin Durant. People say Curry's one-dimensional, that he needs the Warriors system to thrive, or that he can't defend. Lest they forget, Steph's ability to break down defenders off the bounce made a dribble combination famous with his moving behind the back crossover, which is now dubbed as the Curry Slide. Steph's 59% mark from 0 to 3 feet in 2021 22 wasn't great, but a season prior in 2021, he made an elite for a point guard mark of 66.3% in the paint. Nevertheless, 
given Curry's lack of hops doesn't allow him to take over with athleticism down there, that should make people appreciate his purebred skill even more. Instead, you see people poking fun at Steph's lack of defense, which proves they don't watch the games. Curry may not make highlight chase down blocks like Draymond or LeBron, but his attention to detail, vocal leadership, lateral quickness, plus both his one-on-one -on -one and help defense are all on point. If you're one of those fans who doesn't catch on to anything except highlight blocks or steals, Steph's impact is proven in the advanced stats. Curry's defensive rating, which ranks merely a few points below the defensive player of the year Marcus Smart, counters all of the fake narratives people try to stir up about how the warrior goat is one-dimensional, but now there's another talking point that Curry has to prove wrong. The talking point that Curry is just a system player who thrives off the Warriors talent and offensive system is still used against him. This tweet comparing what Stephen Curry's done with the Warriors to what Tony Parker's done with the San Antonio Spurs speaks to a bigger narrative pointing to why Stephen Curry could never be in the same sentence as LeBron in many people's opinion. That storyline has continued even after the 2022 finals, something Steph himself won't complain about. Because as we've seen since he was heavily doubted coming out of Charlotte Christian School and when people thought he was just an average player a few years into his NBA career, someone's doubt or disrespect, even in the slightest form, is merely used as a stick to Curry's proverbial fire. Another Warriors guard looking to crack the 15-man roster has a lot to prove in the preseason, which should be intriguing to watch play out. Said player is Mac McClung, whose quickness to drive past defenders and either explode to the hoop or set up a teammate with a dribble drive, in my opinion, makes him the perfect third-string guard to have in the depth chart. Question will be whether or not Mac's 6'2", 185-pound frame is imposing enough for him to avoid being a defensive liability. From what the G League Rookie of the Year displayed in his only game of legit NBA experience with the LA Lakers last season, his activity on defense stood the task. McClung's a pesky, Fred Van Vliet light-esque defender who I think can last in the association for a long time. Learning behind Poole, DiVincenzo, and Curry, plus being able to swiftly fill in for one of those three at any given time, should again make Mac the ideal number three option at point guard. It'd be a shame if he didn't crack the 15-man roster and had to go back to the G League. But today's shout-out question is, does Curry have more or less help than he had in 2022 for this upcoming season? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout-out, and the top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, what's the most dangerous weapon for Scotty Barnes? Jonas is today's speaks winner for saying, quote, He's weirdly efficient in the mid-range. The moment he steps inside the three-point line, he becomes a problem. You don't let him take that mid-range pull-up or set shot. Then you have to play back on him. You tell the story and community speaks. So leave your take on today's question.